I want you to love me, fuck you. you know, <laughs> that really angry, funny person. And so in each of the books, people have got a scam that we kind of enter into, media ray, where they're going to support groups to allow people to think that they're terminally ill, or they're faking choking in restaurants to allow people to think that they've saved them, and thereby love them. But in the third act, the machine is designed so that it breaks down, so that it destroys itself in the third act. And beyond that point, I never know what's going to happen. And, and that's the greatest joy, is when the story surprises you with something that you, something better than you could anticipate. Because the idea is to become better than just an extension of that little child that decided, you know, they laugh when I say that thing about, no, but the guy before you was sick. That if you can become something that's not just an extension of that two-year-old, then you've broken through. And that's the idea with every story, is to get to a place that I absolutely cannot anticipate. So no, I don't plan the third act. No. Well, thank you. I mean, that's so beautiful. I mean, I was just, I mean, oh, I'm so moved that yeah. it. No, I mean, I've just, I've never heard a writer really I mean, speak so movingly about how they work and how their process is something that they don't control. And it's just so thrilling to hear you talk about your belief, what I'm taking to be your belief in the power of change and hope. I mean, it, and just the way your endings sort of play to that belief. I mean, I'll, I'll just think about your books completely differently after hearing you talk now. How about you and me throw some giant rubber hearts at people? Okay, while you blow the hearts up. And this will take a little time. We have time for, how about two, two questions from the audience. Who's got a question? Ask a question, get a turkey. Hi. You've refuted claims that you're a nihilist with the idea that you're a romantic and that your works are interpreted as nihilism because they express ideas that others don't believe in. And I want to know that what does that loneliness feel like? And other than by writing about it, how do you cope? How do I cope? <laughs> how do I cope? I meditate. <laughs> Another question. Guy standing up? Yep. Okay. I just want to ask about the, uh, the anthology that you were working on, the, the, the writer's workshop. Is that so impressive? Or is that The, uh, uh, the writer's anthology, the sort of writing book where I'm trying to pass along all the stuff that I most value from that other writers have taught me. Tom Spanbauer and Amy Hempel and, uh, and yes, that is in the works. And they, the, 
we're trying to get all the stories in that people are submitting. And by the middle of the summer, once tour is over, then we'll be sort of culling those down and choosing the ones that demonstrate what we want to talk about. And the idea is to do it in such a good way that this can be the first of multiple volumes, multiple editions. So by the middle of the summer, we'll finally be editing. So maybe look for it a year from now. So we've got three more turkeys for three more hearts. There's a heart. We need two more hearts. And I, while we wait for those hearts, I want to thank you very much and the Strand and Julie and Bill and the Cooper Union. The man who taught me how to write, Tom Spanbauer, says that writers write because they were not invited to the party. So thank you very much for inviting me to your party. Yeah.